tax abatement that uh, disparage my character or my motivations. I got up here and made a common sense, I think, informed judgment of why that is beneficial. I don't know the specifics of the Capitol Theater, but I would presume if someone is willing to invest millions of dollars in this community, whether it be downtown or on the west end, east end, north end, or south end of this city, that that perhaps is a positive for this community. Now I would say, with all tax abatements going forward, not that again, we're probably having a moot discussion because there's no decision making going to be made through the city council, we all know that. But regardless, philosophically, if we are to offer tax abatements going forward, there should be certain requirements and strings attached that when an employer suggests that they're going to provide jobs or they're going to provide certain incentives that bring the city to believe that those tax abatements are a wise, judicious expenditure of, uh, of uh, community resources or municipal resources, that if that employer or potential employer doesn't meet that standard, then those tax abatements should be rescinded and the, the, uh, the back taxes, if you will, should be due on request. But let me say this. When somebody sits there and presumes that people in the seventh ward, you know, think a certain way and that's counter to the best interest of the city of Flint, how dare they? The arrogance. It's as obnoxious as me suggesting I can speak for people from a particular part of the city and what they stand for. We're supposedly all in it together. We're all one city. Why do we keep playing this same record, this same tired uh, uh, demagogue counterproductive routine that does nothing to bring our city down? I tell you, if you have nothing, if you have a, an empty, I, I, this is a hypothetical, for everyone to understand in the simplest of terms. If you have some empty site, an empty building sitting on the hill, and there's no prospect for employer or business to come into it, and you're not receiving any tax dollars, and it continues to uh, deteriorate in, in a dilapidated condition and a blight to the neighborhood and the city, and you have no value that's being provided, and then all of a sudden someone comes along and says, I'm considering bringing my business and we'll, we'll renovate this, this site. Now this is hypothetical, but if someone will come into this city and promise jobs, but they need certain tax incentives, because let's face it, this city has a lot nationally, statewide, throughout a wide breadth of our, our, our community, many people are down on this city. So it takes a great incentive for many employers to say, I'll take the chance and come to Flint. But instead, we have the naysayers that come along and play these, these garbage routines time and time again. I know this, this is a moot point. This decision will be made on the theater. And given what I've heard, I hope that the, the abatements are provided. Because if, if indeed the millions of dollars of capital improvements, no pun intended, on the theater are provided, that's a plus for this community. So why are we sitting here fighting with one another? Let's get our act together and let's stop. If someone wants to run for public office and play this game, God help if those are the sort of people we elect. Thanks, Alex. Is there anyone else who would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. Mr. President? Sheldon? Yeah, uh, Glenda, if, if you don't mind, there's a couple more questions, Mr. Ferris. Uh, uh, Glenda, 
as it relates to as it relates to the questions that was asked by a resident about the transferable uh, nature of this abatement. I would have to look at the act uh, under the IFEC. Those are transferable, so I assume that these are also. If a new owner comes in, if, if, a, if the, the tax payment will be transferable with this, if it's in, within inside of the twelve-year period. Yes. 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 Uh, Mr. Dermoni, what was the second question? I'm sorry. Do we have that available right now, Glenda? Or? I can't tell you the total breakdown um, because, like I stated, uh, when, you, when taxes are assessed, they're assessed against the land, the building, and then there's personal property taxes. As Mr. Ferris stated, they pay already 15000 in personal property taxes. That's going to remain. And any taxes that are assessed against the value of the land, not including the building, that will remain. I just don't have a breakdown of that here. Right. Now, up on the execution on this by the emergency manager, whether it's approved or denied, uh, is that some information that we can uh, gather at that time? Yes. And if, if so, I would like to have that, and I'll okay. send a referral, Janelle, down to uh, Mr. Brown up on execution of these abatements. Also, uh, can, I, can I just jump in real quick? Because I don't know that you or, or she understood your question. The question that was forwarded by Mr. Del Moroni? Yeah, the one about what will, I mean, the value you won't know until the renovation is done and this, the property is reassessed. You can't just say, you know, arbitrarily pick out a, a value of what that property is right now until the property is, is, is reassessed by the assessor's office, right? That is correct, but I could just tell you about the information that I have on the taxes that are assessed on the building as the value sits now. In any current information that we can to uh, answer that particular question from a resident, that would be appreciated. Okay. And we'll forward that information. Also, now, is the 12-year period for the application, is that the maximum allowed by the state law? That's the maximum. Is there anything, uh, I think we went over this the last time, is there anything prohibiting uh, a less amount of time? No, it can be up to the 12 years. Up, up to the 12-year period. Yes. Uh, thank you, Glenda. You're welcome. Uh, and just a, just a comment. I understand that, uh, as Councilman Freeman made this uh, known earlier, that this council body uh, does not have the ability to approve nor deny any particular tax abatements, but I think it's important um, for, for me to let my feelings be known, providing a recommendation to the emergency manager. But I, I don't want any tax abatements to be provided if the people are not heard on it. If the people uh, if the people's input falls on deaf ears, I, I don't want that to go forward. So my recommendation as it relates to tax abatements and M Mike Brown uh, and his contingent uh, group, Ed Kurtz and those individuals, <clears throat> over the last few years, they probably provided more than a dozen tax abatements to different entities throughout the state of Michigan. And we, well, sorry, the city of Flint. Uh, and if we look at it in its totality, we're not talking about $15,000 here, $5,000 here. We're looking at uh, over a long period of time, we're talking about a great sum of money that would never be realized by individuals or this community to uh, use for essential services like public safety and different things of that nature. But until the people's input has been heard, I think it's uh, incumbent upon Mr. Brown to probably delay any further tax abatements until this body is restored to its fullness, until power can be restored to the individuals that's elected by you all to make sure that the people's words uh, are not falling upon deaf ears. Uh, but I just wanted, I wanted to say that, and Mr. Ferry, I think you, you have a fine establishment. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, but I do want the people's input to have some uh, leverage here as we go forward in this community, as we talk about a master planning process is going to go and unfold for 20 years. But we have to look at this thing in this whole totality as these abatements. And your tax abatement probably will exceed uh, $200,000 um, up or down values, $180,000 at the $15,000 tax abated year that we're talking about now. Over its totality for your abatement, $180,000. For the ones that Mike Brown, remember he was here uh, before 2009, and he's had a, his hand uh, in the direction of this community for some time now. And so when you look at all the abatements that was given uh, for the downtown area, South Saginaw Street, it's going to be quite a bit of money that's not going to be realized for this community. So I want my feelings to be known on that. Thank you, Councilman Neely. Okay. 
We, um, for those of you who have picked up an agenda in the back, there's another public hearing that was published in the newspaper, did not make the agenda. So, Madam Clerk, you want to talk about that, and then we'll postpone it to the next uh, meeting? Yes, uh, inadvertently, the uh, public hearing for Raw Car, which also does business as CFI Medical Solutions, did not appear on this agenda. It's resolution number 130573. It was published for a public hearing for tonight, but as I mentioned, it was inadvertently omitted from the agenda. But we were also informed in the interim by the Community Development Department that they wanted this particular public hearing postponed anyway. So we will need a, re a motion to postpone it. They did not give us a date for the rescheduling of the public hearing. But in any event, when it is rescheduled, we will have to republish in order to allow the public the opportunity to again speak on the since, public hearing. Since, we, since we're going to have to republish it anyway, then it'll be a different number, is that correct? It'll probably be a different, well, it'll probably be a point one. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, let, read the number again it, so that I can. Okay, the resolution number is 130573. And again, we do not have a date yet from the Community Development Department as to when that hearing will take place. Okay, if I could get a motion to postpone 130573 until we get the proper um, notification from the Department of Community and Economic Development so we can have the public hearing. Is that correct? That's, That's correct. What we need? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Discussion? Roll, Madam Clerk. Ms. Kroon? Yes. Ms. Poplow? Yes. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Okay, that brings us to the public speaking portion of our council meeting this evening. Madam Clerk, we'll call your name. Please come to the microphone. Limit your comments to five minutes and refrain from personal attacks on individuals and or institutions. And Madam Clerk? The first speaker is Robert Johnson. Mr. Robert Johnson. We're doing double duty today. Last time you had a meeting, um, and last time I was here at the meeting just was... Robert, give us your name just... Oh, it's Robert, Robert Johnson. Thank I you. live in the city of Flint. Thank you. <clears throat> um, anyway, the last time I was here, it was during the special meeting for the master plan, in which at that time I asked you guys to do something about my council person not being seated, and no replacement. Well, since then, we got the emergency manager in which he did a nice little thing and said that he wasn't going to replace that seat. Is that still correct? Can nobody will answer? That's correct. Well, the way I see this is our democracy, our republic, everybody, you know, pledged their allegiance to the flag in which I still do. And you all, I heard you all do it. 